everyone, my name is Hannah Holman and I'm a professional female cellist. I wanted to introduce you to some female cellists from the past that I feel like deserve to be known. Today I wanted to talk about a woman from Britain who was known for the Elgar Concerto. And I know what you're thinking, but it's not her. It's a different woman. Um, it's not Jacqueline Dupre. It's Beatrice Harrison. Beatrice was born in India, December 9th of 1892. Her father was the colonel in the uh, British military and he was uh, stationed in India. He came back to England and met this charming Celtic woman, very artistic and beautiful, and he convinced her to marry him and they left for India. Uh, his new wife was not so fond of India, but um, decided to follow him. They had four daughters total. They had two in India, and uh, the first one was uh, a woman named May, and the se second one is the woman we're talking about today, Beatrice. The mother was so unhappy that she convinced her husband to come back to England. So when Beatrice was only a couple months old, they moved back to England. Beatrice went to a concert at the age of 18 months and heard her first cello. And at that point she said, Baba play cello. And she called herself, Baba was her name in, in India and that's what she went by her whole life. So she was determined to play the cello at the age of 18 months. The mother was always the manager, promoter, supporter, and inspiration for her whole life. She gave those girls a wonderful education. They all played piano first, and um, they eventually all accompanied each other. She first got her first cello at around the age of seven. Her mother came back from a shopping trip in London and presented her with this cello, and she was super excited. I think she didn't really have formal lessons until later. She actually, though, played for Pablo Casals when she was nine. Uh, she was accepted at the age of 11 into the Royal College of Music uh, in London, and she studied with a cellist named uh, W.E. Whitehouse. I think the combination of her mother's artistic spirit and her father's discipline uh, helped all of the sisters, especially Beatrice, uh, she kept diaries detailing how her practice was going every day and, and how many hours she practiced a day. And on average, she practiced at least four hours a day. And she would talk about what passages she did. And uh, I think we should all take notes on our practice like that. At the age of 15, she did her Queen's Hall debut. And listen to what was on this program. She played the Sansol Concerto, the Victor Herbert Suite, the Volman variations and Bach, uh, some Bach suite movements. At the age of 16 though, it was decided that she needed uh, further study and the whole family moved to Berlin so that she could study with Hugo Becker. So that just shows you the family's commitment level. At some point, I think the father drop, uh, the father quit his job so he could support all of his uh, daughter's musical endeavors. And all of the sisters were playing at a super high level. Um, the lessons were going really well with Hugo Becker, so well that at the age of 17, he encouraged her to enter the Mendelssohn Prize competition. And um, that was a huge deal, because most people thought, well, she's a British girl cellist. She shouldn't even enter, she's not German. Uh, now the prize happens in both England and Germany, but um, she went on to win it, and that was a first. She was the youngest and the first cellist and a British girl, and so the London Times, the Telegraph, all of them published a huge story on, on Beatrice winning the Mendelssohn Prize. Somebody said, she plays like a man, but with the grace and tenderness of a woman. In 1910, she gave a performance of the Brahms Double Concerto with her sister May. And at that time, the Brahms Double was not necessarily a well-played or known work. Uh, but it, they 
the, the thought of these two sisters playing it really captured everybody's imagination, and they went on to play it at least 60 times in their career. They always had a deep love of animals and pets in their family. In their Berlin apartment, they had lizards, turtles, and 50 canaries, because Beatrice loved birds so much. I, I can't even imagine that. They moved back to England after the studies in Germany were over. And again, just picture this, they traveled back from Germany with a maid, a governess, the Indian butler, the 50 canaries, lizards, fish, snakes, tortoises, cello, violins, music, and hand luggage. That must have been quite something. Winning the Mendelssohn Prize really helped her career take off. She went on to play in Warsaw and she played the Rococo variations and supposedly that created such a sensation that she was called back to the stage 20 times. She played in Russia and Glazunov conducted her and her sister playing the Brahms double and Rachmaninoff was in the audience. I mean, I can't even imagine. Uh, at that concert, she was brought back 40 times to the stage. She ended up playing 27 encores. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but I think people in Russia really went crazy for her and her sister and the cello. Students carried them to the carriage and took away the horses and carried them back, uh, led the carriage back. The students like pulled the carriage themselves because they were so enamored with her and her sister. She came to the United States in 1913. She was the first woman cellist to play in Carnegie Hall. She was the first woman cellist to play with the Boston Symphony and the Chicago Symphony. Uh, the halls, though, were not full because they were not used to the cello being a solo instrument, let alone a female cellist. Coming back from that U.S. tour, she was supposed to be with her mom and her sisters. They all traveled together. Uh, they were supposed to be on the Lusitania. And we all know what happened to the Lusitania, but her mother had a dream the night before that something bad was gonna to happen to that ship. And so changed the plan and they ended up not being on the Lusitania. And, uh, but the mother had not gotten word to the father. So the next day when it came news that the Lusitania had sunk, the father thought he had lost the whole family. Um, but then turns out they got another ship. But her father, was very, very kind. Um, even though he didn't understand this whole music business, he was super supportive. Um, one of his words of wisdom, pieces of advice to Beatrice was, remember you are a servant of the public. Do your best, your very best, but whether there are thousands or only one person in the audience, always strive to reach your ideal. She was recording in 1919 at HMV Studios in London, and Elgar, uh, was also there. That first performance of the Elgar was not a success, but uh, Elgar wanted um, Beatrice Harrison to record it. So she recorded it with Elgar first acoustically in 1919 and then a second time electronically in 1923. The family moved to Surrey, England, into this beautiful country estate called Foyle Riding. They had six gardeners, if that gives you any um, <laughs> indication of, I, I think money was not an issue for them. Uh, it was so beautiful at this uh, country estate that it inspired Beatrice to go outside and play her cello. And for this, no matter all of her huge successes that she had had and will have had after this, I think it was really this thing that happened at this country garden that she is most remembered by for people that remember her. She played in that garden and all of a sudden this beautiful bird started singing and she told one of the gardeners the next day and the gardener said, that's a nightingale. We haven't had nightingales here forever. And so the next night she played and the nightingale sang again and the next night um, and she was so excited and so Actually, when she was recording the Elgar with Elgar conducting in 1923, the second time, it was the spring after the Nightingales had first sung, and she thought, oh my gosh, I need to share this with the public. And so she actually approached one of the BBC producers, um, again, 1923, and said, would you come to my Surrey garden 
so that we could capture the cello and the nightingale. And they said basically no, and she called and, and, and persuaded them to come. And so they came, they sat in their garden, they, they sat in her garden, they set up all this equipment. She started playing at 9 p.m., nothing, nothing, nothing. They heard rabbits and squirrels. Um, finally, at 10.45, after she had played for an hour and 45 minutes, the nightingale started singing. And that created a sensation because the B BBC were broadcasting it all throughout England and Europe. And um, thousands and thousands and thousands of people started writing in and calling and um, she became very famous for that. She, she actually went on a tour of the United States and actually announced in an interview that anybody was welcome to come to her country garden and listen to the Nightingales. And actually they ended up having busloads of people and the mother would organize tea trays and wine and treats for all these people and they would stay until dawn. When I first learned of Beatrice, I can't exactly remember. I think it was when I was studying the Elgar Concerto in college. But it might have been just after that when I lived in Worcester, England. And Worcester was where Elgar lived and worked. And there's the Elgar Birthplace. And in the Elgar Birthplace Museum uh, were CDs of Beatrice playing the Elgar Concerto with Elgar himself conducting. So I was like, Wow, that's pretty interesting. But I think that with age and perspective, only now do I realize how much she contributed to ch the cello and early musical life. There is an autobiography that came to light in 1985-ish. Uh, this woman was uh, doing a biography of all four of the uh, Harrison sisters and the youngest one produced this autobiography that had never come to light. So uh, if you are curious to learn more about Beatrice Harrison, I would suggest finding her autobiography. It's very, very colorful, and I think it takes you uh, into the moments that she was living in England at the time. This would make a great movie for any of you that um, like Downton Abbey. Any filmmakers out there, you should check out. Uh, her autobiography and let me know. Anyway, um, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about Miss Beatrice Harrison. There are several recordings. You have to listen to her Elgar because that's like the source. Elgar himself is conducting. Uh, cello was her life and her staff and she said that as long as she had the cello and music she felt no fear and felt peace.